I think if you really look at the history of India's space program, it is one of the biggest movements and biggest achievements for India's scientific community. Because this is one technology which was denied to India way back in early 90s. And subsequently, without any assistance from any other country, India was supposed to develop it on its own. And over a period of around one and a half decade, India has successfully demonstrated its capabilities. But this is just a first step. There is only one test which has become successful. And we need to really see to it that future three to four tests become fully successful. And then I can say with confidence that India has really operationalized this technology. Right now, if one looks at the global satellite launch market, where India is very keen to put its foot, uh, all these years India was using its PSLV launch vehicle. And with that vehicle, India has so far launched satellites for around 35 countries. Now these satellites are either on commercial basis or because of a bilateral arrangements. But India is very keen to invest into this arena of uh, satellite launch capabilities. And India had certain amount of limitations because India was not able to put satellites into a geostationary orbit. Uh, satellites which are weighing more than 2 to 3 tons. Uh, particularly what happens is that your entire commercial launch market from a perspective of communication is heavy satellite launches only because you require communication satellites into a geostationary orbit uh, and India was not able to really grab that market. Now with this technology becoming successful, I think over a period of time India would like to use it both for its own purposes as well as for commercial purposes. I think if we compare all the countries because there are hardly uh, US, India, Russia, China and Japan, they have successfully launched heavy satellites out, out into the space. There are very famous vehicles like Delta, Arian and uh, uh, Japanese vehicle and Chinese vehicle Long March. So all these vehicles, if you really look at the development stages, they have taken at least 10 years of a time. So from that perspective, maybe India has taken uh, two to three years more as compared to the other countries. But it's not that the other countries have taken extremely limited amount of a time and India has taken a huge amount of a time. So that is number one. Number two is that if you look at the developmental technologies which have been used, except Russia, every other country is using a combination of a cryogenic and a semi-cryogenic. So this goes on to prove that to do a launch of a satellite which is weighing more than two tons, you do require a cryogenic technology. So from that point of view, in my personal opinion, I feel that India had not India had no other option but to follow a cryogenic path. Definitely, if you look at the uh, present configuration of the GSLV which India successfully launched, uh, it has got a solid liquid and a, a cryogenic stage. Uh, usually, globally, it has been seen that nobody uses a solid stage. Either it is a liquid or a semi-cryogenic and a cryogenic. Because if you are having these two stages, you are able to lift more amount of a weight. Right now what India did was that to lift around two tons of a weight. But India has to reach to a level of able to, uh, to uh, reach to a level of developing capabilities to lift weights around four to six tons. So for that purpose they will definitely have to go via semi-cryogenic plus cryogenic route. You see what happens is that no country can develop a technology in isolation. Uh, in today's world, you require a certain amount of a backups either based on international agreements or based on your private sector getting boost into developing these technologies. If you look at a space sector which is in India, it is still in a very nascent stage. So from that perspective, ISRO was not in a position the way US depends on Boeing or Lockheed Martin, the big giants into aerospace business. India had no other options but to develop on its own. Number two is that because of India's nuclear policies, India was denied technologies for all these years. So India had to start from a scratch. And from that perspective, definitely India had a lot more challenges than maybe other countries. But finally, at least now it appears that India is there.